Okay, what I wanted to do today was start a playlist on Laplace transforms. And of course, we're starting with the most simple example. We're just starting with, we wanna find the Laplace transform of just one. But before we get into this problem, we just wanna look at briefly what is a Laplace transform. Well, we have this definition over here to the right. And this actually really demystifies it because when we're looking at the Laplace transform, we're just looking for an integral, but it's this integral specifically from zero to infinity. And we have our function. So like in this case of the problem we're doing, our function f of t is just one, but the integral is gonna be multiplied by e to the minus st. I'm not gonna to get too much into the background of what this is used for. This is usually taught as part of a differential equations class. And you can actually use this to solve some types of differential equations. Later on in this playlist, we'll actually do a couple of those differential equations, but that's not really gonna be my emphasis. I'm kind of splitting this out from differential equations and just showing how to derive these and do some of these problems. Okay, so let's get back to solving for the Laplace transform of one. And what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna use this formula and kind of plug everything in. So for our Laplace transform of one, we'll have this whole thing over here. And again, our function is just gonna be one. So really, we just have the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st. And the nice thing about Laplace transforms is integrating stuff with e to the minus st into it is usually not too hard. So we can usually do most of these integrals without too much trouble. So then just integrating this thing, we end up with e to the minus st. We'll bring a minus s into the denominator. We just need to evaluate this from zero to infinity. But when I do this, I just want to be a little careful of this infinity here. So let's write it out as a limit. We're looking at the, for this, we're looking at the limit as t approaches infinity of this business, e minus st over minus s. And then we'll plug in our zero to get this other part. So we have e to the zero here, so we're gonna have one in the numerator, and we'll just have this minus s in the denominator. And of course, minus times minus is plus here, so that will clean up pretty nicely. And then we just need to deal with this limit over here. But the thing about this is we don't really know what s is. We know that s is some number, but we don't know what it is. We don't know if it's positive or negative. Now the trouble is, if s is negative here, then we have some positive number times t, and we're evaluating this at infinity. Well, essentially e to infinity is going off to infinity and this thing diverges. So we actually need this. We need s to be greater than zero in order for this coefficient to be negative. So what we'll do is we'll set a condition on this. We'll say that we need s to be greater than zero in order to do this. But if we do that, again, this limit is always going off to zero. We don't have to worry about it. But then all we're left with is our solution of just one over s. Now, before I finish this up, just one other example I wanna look at is we did the Laplace of one what if it was some other number? Like, let's say we were asked to find the Laplace of seven, let's say. Well, of course we could do the same exact thing and plug it in, but notice if we plug in a seven, we could just bring it out front of the integral. But what that tells us is we actually have this property of Laplace transforms that you can factor a constant out. So for like Laplace of seven, I could actually factor that seven out in front of the Laplace transform. We could write this as seven times Laplace of one, but we know what Laplace of one is. So we end up with seven times one over S, or just seven over s. And it's just something to keep in mind that basically the properties that we have of integrals where we could take a constant out of an integral and bring it out front, that holds for a Laplace transform. But the reason I go over this is just to notice that the properties we have for integrals, they typically hold for Laplace transforms. Another really quick example of this is if you have some addition going on inside the Laplace transform, like if you have Laplace of f of t plus g of t, and this will work for plus or minus, of course. Well, you could break this up as the Laplace of f of t plus the Laplace of g of t. And this would be really easy to show, but just picture if you plugged f of t plus g of t in here, well then you have addition, you could split an integral. So if you can split the integral on addition or subtraction, then you can do the same thing for a Laplace transform. Okay, so that's it for the introduction on Laplace transforms. We'll keep going with a bunch more of these and some more examples. Thanks everyone for watching, have a good day.